Alright guys, so what you're seeing on the screen here is a live submission status. I just submitted my car or autonomous driving car assignment for the Coursera DeepLearning.ai course as a project assignment. Notebook successfully submitted and we'll click OK. Here it is here. Here's the assignment. And let's see how I did. We got in here. Did I pass? Yes! Look at that. I'll prove to you that it was live. Look, 15th of January, 4.37pm and it is now. 4.38 p.m. if you can read that. Welcome to Learning Intelligence 18. Thank you so much for tuning in. And this episode's gonna be good fun. I might not be able to get onto the artificial intelligence nano degree for a few days yet. Reason being is, I'm not sure what happened, but I paid to sign up for term two, but I don't have access to it yet. So I emailed support and I'm waiting for a response back. And I did get a response back, like an automated one. And it said they weren't, or they're out of office for the time being. I think they should be back within 28, 24 to 48 hours. That doesn't mind, matter to me. I'm gonna keep going through with the uh, deeplearning.ai specialization on Coursera. I just finished, as you saw, completing that uh, autonomous, I'll show you, I'll show you. Car detection with YOLO V2. What is YOLO? Well, YOLO is a object detection algorithm. And if you, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last episode, but object detection deals with when there's more than one item in an image. So in last week's, last week's classes, we went through uh, image classification, which is deciding whether an object is in an image, so, or what's in an image, sorry. The example I gave in last week's episode was, is my friend smiling or not smiling? The, what the algorithm would do is just like decipher if the face is smiling or not smiling, just as easy as that. And what object detection does is it looks for multiple objects in an, in an image. Say for example, you're driving a self-driving car, or you won't be driving it, but the object detection system will be looking for multiple objects. Of course, you've got plenty of different cars out there, you've got traffic lights, you've got stop lights, you've got pedestrians, you've got crazy birds flying at your windscreen. But that's enough talking from me. Let me show you an example. So if we look here, I'll go straight into the code. Object detection. Now, the data set was provided by Drive.ai, which is a, a startup working on autonomous vehicles. And so this is what object detection looks like. You'll have your, your scenery there, and it's probably a bit out of focus. I don't know if you can see that really, but this is a road, you've got a road, traffic lights, and object detection means putting a box around the main object in screen, in this case, a car. And let me go through to a better example. And that is the final output of my algorithm. It found seven boxes for test.jpg and there's a car, car, bus, car, 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 car. And now look at that. I hardly even saw this bus in the first image, but this is what the algorithm we built. And it's called the YOLO detection algorithm. And if you wanna know what YOLO stands for, apart from you only live once, it stands for you only look once. And so what this algorithm does is it only looks once at the image. So it saves a lot of computation power rather than continually looking over the image over and over and over again. And I won't fully go in depth in explaining the YOLO uh, algorithm. However, I do have a good resource for you to learn more. It's Siraj's video. And now I haven't watched this, but I can tell it's good. Look how many views it's got. And Siraj is a wizard, so come on. You, you know what he's puts out is good stuff. I'm gonna watch this video uh, because I've just passed the assignment, so I'm really happy with that. I'll let you check out the video as well and learn more about YOLO object detection. Tomorrow I'm gonna get into week four, which is the final week about convolutional neural networks, which is on facial recognition. So I'm really excited for that and we'll check in once I've done some more. Guys, it's been a massive day. Probably one of the biggest days I've had in a while. Definitely the biggest day of 2018 in terms of learning and completing goals and whatnot. I'm definitely well and truly ready for bed. I'm going to show you guys what I've been up to today and I'm dressed in my PJs already. Check out the Captain America shirt. I haven't worn this one in a while actually. I think my mum got it for me. So thanks mum. Let's check out what I've done. First off, we completed this assignment, which was art generation with neural style transfer. And what essentially this is, is using neural networks or using deep learning to combine the style of one image with the content of another image to create something completely new. So I'll show you what I did. There's a photo of my face, which gets a fair bit of work out on these, uh, these image tests. And there's one of Picasso's paintings. I don't know exactly which one it's called. Here's the combination after about, I think that's 20 minutes of training. So what do you think? Eh? Eh? Which one looks better? <laughs> I actually like that. That looks pretty cool. But then we moved on. So we finished that one. We passed that assignment, which was 
really fun. And then we did facial recognition for the happy house. In the last clip, I think I mentioned that, uh, or in the last video, I'm not sure, that I did the image recognition assignment that involved uh, designing a model that wouldn't let people into a house unless they were smiling. So this one was really fun. And I learned out the difference between facial recognition and facial verification. Facial verification is, face verification is comparing it to one image and facial recognition, uh, it's not on the screen there, but let me give you an example. So facial verification is say you're going through the airport, right? And you give someone your passport and they put it on a scanner. And the scanner compares your passport photo with your face image. So that's facial verification, only comparing one image to one image. Essentially, it's an image of you compared to your actual face. Whereas facial recognition is, say for example, in Baidu, they, which is a big Chinese uh, internet company like Google of, in China, and they have a facial recognition system to let people into their building. So facial recognition deals with one face, aka my face if I was walking into the building, comparing it with thousands of other faces or more than one other face. And in the case of Baidu, if if I was to try to walk in their building and their facial recognition system picked up my face, they would compare my face with all the other staff there and see if I was in their database and it wouldn't let me in if I wasn't part of it. That's a quick difference between facial verification and facial recognition. And in the case of the iPhone 10, I've used that as an example before, that's facial verification because it's comparing your face to your real life face to the saved data on the iPhone. So that's facial verification rather than facial recognition. We've got a few more tabs to work through and then, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. And for that assignment, actually, if you're working on it, if you're working on the facial recognition assignment for course four of the deep learning.ai specialization, there is a post here from a Coursera engineer. So it actually took me a while to get that one submitted because there's an error in, in the programming assignment and I had to run these two codes to fix it up. I'll leave that forum link in the description so you can access it if you need it. Uh, but they said they should fix it up relatively soon. So we'll see if that's fixed if you're up for that. And there we go. Look at that. I'm really proud of this one. That was probably one of my favorite courses so far. I rated it five stars and left a good review for it because I had so much fun going through the convolutional neural networks. And that's four out of five. Look at that. That's what I completed today. Week four, I did a week's worth of classes and programming assignments in one day. How did I get through it all? Because like, that's, what is it? It rates it at about two, two hours per programming assignment and about two hours worth of classes, about six hours worth of learning. And ideally you could get that done quite easily over a week, but I, I just fast forwarded it and got it done in a day. I'll show you what my breakdown is of, of what I do on a general day. I have the privilege at the moment, I'm really lucky that I can study uh, five days a week. I can get up and just, devote my time to learning. And I'll show you, this is my rough routine of what I do pretty much every day. Wake up, that'll be around 6, 7 a.m. And then this will read for an hour at least. And then I have a study 1.5 hour block. No interruptions there, that's really important. Uh, that's with all these blocks as well. No interruptions, I'm focusing on one single task at a time. So study 1.5 hours, then I have a one, point, one hour break and I eat then, that's breakfast. That'll be around 11, 12 o'clock. Then I study for another one and a half hours or until I've reached my study goal for the day. I make sure at the start of the day I have a one major goal that if I completed that, the rest of the day would be a good day because once you get that one major thing out of the way, the rest of the day is on, you can go on autopilot almost and just cruise. So get the biggest task out of the way first. Study 1.5 hours, then finish or finish the goal. Then I have a 30 minute break. And then if I haven't finished the goal, I'll study for an hour again. Usually by about this point, I'm um, zoned out. And that's when I need to go and work out, which is what I did today and why I'm doing this clip at 9.36 p.m. at night because I finished learning for the day and then I went and worked out, had an awesome session to clear my head. When I finished studying today, I was, my, my brain was, was all over the shop. I was, it was ready to shut down. I could go for a nap and not wake up till tomorrow, I think. The workout cleared my head and now I'm, I'm ready to actually talk again. I couldn't record a clip before because I would, would not be able to talk. But we're gonna get moved through these tabs. It's gonna be the longest clip I've ever done. Here's my beautiful certificate. Look at that. I just realized the camera was zoomed in on my face. That's all right. Look at this, Daniel Burke, Convolutional Neural Networks, an online non-credit course authorized by deeplearning.ai and offered by, through Coursera. I'm so stoked with this. 
That's number four. That's a four certificate. I'll show you them all once I've finished the whole course. This is the last one, course five out of five for the deep learning.ai. This is what I'm gonna do next, and it's not released yet. So it's on sequence models. Sequence models are used for like voice recognition, uh, text recognition and whatnot, anything that's in a sequence or a time sequence. So text on a page, that can be in a sequence. What's it called when they make sound waves? Sound waves over time, that's a sequence. So like when you say, hey Siri, and your iPhone goes, Dum! That's a that's essentially using voice recognition. So that's a sequence model. And then let's register with the MIT Artificial General Intelligence course together to sign up for this one. The link is in the description, by the way. I know I mentioned in the last video. Oh, I need to unlock master pass one password to save this. We'll cancel that. I'll just save it in Google. There we go. So we're signed up to the MIT Artificial General Intelligence course. That'll be going soon. And last but not least is this film clip. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but check it out, Justin Timberlake's new video. Has a reference to deep learning in it. Look at the first clip. Here we go. Pan-Asia Deep Learning Conference, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, 2028. I don't know if you saw that. I'll leave a link in the description. That is Justin Timberlake's latest song, and it references deep learning and AI. What could be better? Artificial intelligence and deep learning meets Justin Timberlake. Is this true? Yes, it is. It's amazing. Check it out. But guys, that's it. I'm gonna do some reading before I go to bed. I'm gonna get back up in the morning, and I'm gonna go over my notes for the past two days because I haven't heard back from the artificial intelligence standard degree term two yet. I've, I've completed all that's available on the Coursera deep learning.ai specialization so far. So the sequence models, course isn't out yet, but I'm signed up for notifications. So when it comes out, I'll let you know and I'll show you my progress. We'll catch you tomorrow. And uh, that was a long clip. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay guys, so since I'm finished the all the courses in the deep learning.ai or all the ones that are available, I've just been going over the last two weeks worth of content, week three and week four of course four, the convolutional networks course. And I was pulling out some key points and I thought I'd share with you what my favorite key points were from the object detection classes and the, the computer vision using YOLO, the YOLO algorithm. So first of all, object detection and classification. What are the differences? So what are localization and detection? So if we look at image classification, right, that is just what is in the image. So in this one, it's a car. So you think of image classification as what? And I think of image localization as where, so we know that there's a car, right? And But with localization, we wanna know where it is. So what are the Y and X coordinates? And what can we do with these? Well, I'll show you later what we can do. But then if you take it a step further and we go to detection. Now detection is a combination of both of these, so image classification and localization, but with multiple objects. So if we see here, we have car, that could be number one, and this could be number two. And then even if we draw some red boxes up here, we've got some traffic lights, and even way back down here, we've got a, a street sign that we could also classify as an object. So really, you have three, four, five, six objects, so multiple objects. And as a combination of localization, right, we have X and Y, coordinates for all of those. And also another another coordinate of this is, or another uh, number, another variable we can pull out is the height and the width of the box around. But we'll check that out in a second, actually. I think it's on this slide. Oh, and PS, all of this is from the, all wherever you see the source uh, label here, so down in the bottom, it's from the deep learning.ai course. So make sure you check that out. The link will be in the description. And we go here. So what we're trying to figure out when we do object detection or object classification or object localization is find the target label Y. And what is Y? Well, Y, we come down here. And essentially, Y is a list of numbers, aka an encoding, which is here. But we'll get onto that in a second. So Y, look at this box. So this is what we're trying to turn this into. We're trying to turn this image into Y, the output. And now first, the first major thing or major actually forget about here for the time being so that's just calculating different coordinates of y but i'll cover the first major component of y is pc so this is the main one we want to find out first and what's pc well i like to think of it as the principal component but i don't know if that's the exact terminology but this is how i think of it because it's easy easy to remember and the principal component what that essentially is asking is 
this little green circle here. Is there any object? And if there is an object, which in this image there is, you have the car here, we're going to put a one because one is yes, and of course, zero is no. And look at this image. There is no car in here. That's what we're looking for. And now, if we do have a zero, right, we essentially don't care about the rest of the parameters because why would we expend extra computing power if the object we are looking for is not in the image? So we're just going to not care about these, right? We don't need these, these extra parameters. But what are these actual parameters? Well, if we look back over to this box, we got here. We've got BX, BY, BH, BW, 0, 1, 0. What exactly do these mean? We've got X and Y coordinates as well. And so BX, if we come up here, is the position in the box. Let's change to a different color. So if you imagine X is, well, X is down here and Y is here. So we want to know BX is the position of this box on the X, X axis, so this axis here. All right, and BY is the position of this box on the Y axis. And then we've got BH is the height of this box. All right, and then BW is the width of this box. Okay, so that's, that's the components that we have here. There's the variables, the main ones. We have one, yes, there is an object. And then we have where the object is on the, in the X and the whole image, where it is in the Y and the height and the width of it. Now that's very useful information because what we can then use is that to further calculate these three. And now where do these three numbers come from? Well, they come from up here, All right? So this is our list of, of potential things. So we've got a pedestrian, car, motorcycle, background, and then five if you wanted to add in might be in the case of a self-driving car, traffic lights, and then six, you could have pedestrians, but we won't, the list could go on and on and on and on and on, right? But if we look back to this little section here, we got zero, one, zero. And now that is that only has three components, but in the case of a real self-driving car, you might have zero, one, zero, and it would just keep going. In the example we used in the in the lectures, it had 80 different classifications. So you have pedestrians, traffic lights, stop signs, road signs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in this case, we're just keeping it simple. We have three different items and it has a number one for car. So no pedestrians in this image, no motorcycles, but there is a car. And remember, we don't care about any of these because it's, it's just a background, right? And now, what can we do with these numbers? So remember, computers love numbers. I'm going to put that in purple writing here so you, you understand it. Computers, or I'm trying to get around my head as well, love numbers. All right, so a computer does, has no idea what a car is. But it does know what a big list of numbers, what this list of numbers, and remember, it's going to be bigger in real life, actually is. Well, sorry, it, re it can compare this list of numbers to say we had a database of other list of numbers, right? So then we got our, our car, our pedestrians, our traffic lights, our stop signs, our buses, our trucks, and it's going to go, okay, let's compare, let's compare our car. So this, this number here, let's compare that to our database of different numbers and figure out which one of these matches up best. Okay, so we've got a car. Now, what it, can it do with this? Once it knows that it's a car there, what can it do? Well, in the case of a self-driving car, it might uh, go back to the main computer and then give it some directions. So does it need to go forward, left, back or right? Well, it might need to go forward. It doesn't need to go right. It doesn't need to go left. It doesn't need to go back. But forward, okay, well, how close is it? That's when other sensors can come in. And then we can calculate how fast do we need to go forward. So remember, as we talked about before, and as we, I mentioned, I think, in the face uh, example, the face example before, a set, what a computer is doing is pulling out components from this we have here, finding a list of numbers and then comparing it to a database. And these two lists of numbers are called encodings. So whenever you hear the, the word encoding, I know it took me a long time to get around this. I don't know why, but encoding essentially means turning an image or turning a piece of raw data into a list of numbers so we can compare it to another list of encoding. All right. And then another cool part was the YOLO algorithm. So this is the state of the art computer vision model. So state of the art, it's in, what I mean by that, it's, it's, it's probably the best one that's out there. And now it's, it's actually YOLO V2 at the moment. So this should really be YOLO V2. 
but we won't worry about that too much. There's there's other YOLO algorithms out there. I'll leave the link in the description, by the way, to Siraj's video on the YOLO algorithm, and he does a great explanation of it. And so this this all this information is sourced from here. So thank you to PJ Rennie. And if we look at what does the YOLO algorithm actually do? Well, we'll start off, we start off with an image, much like we did in the previous slide. And the YOLO algorithm stands for you only look once. So it's only going to look at this image one time. Right? And what it does in that one time is it creates a grid. So we've got a grid here. See all these my lines are really roughly drawn, drawn. And then we we what it does in the next step is it uses those uses that grid that it made and it creates all these little boxes here. So you can see all these little boxes and each one of these, each square in this grid will have five boxes. So this is, imagine this is one box. So that means this box has one, 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 one. So a whole box doesn't have to be in there for a box to be counted. If, if this box here, this one here had another box like this, that would mean it would have two because it's got the corner of the orange and corner of the white box. So it's got, each one of these is going to have about five. It could be a different number depending on what type of uh, YOLO algorithm you're using, what type of parameters you're using. But what it will do then is it will run the image through a CNN, which outputs an encoding. Remember what an encoding is? A list of numbers, right? So we're just this is our end goal. Our end goal always with, with many deep learning models is a list of numbers. Okay, and then what? Well, how does it how does it go from here to here? What's the significance of of all these little boxes, all these tiny ones in this section here, and tiny ones in this section here? Well, you see how this one is thicker. This here, this this yellow box, this red box, and this green box in the back. If you can if you can see that, what that's going to do is it's going to translate. It's going to bring those over, and then we finish up here with the dog, a bicycle and a car that's what we're left with because these boxes were the thickest and now how does it how does it do that how does it find out which boxes are the are the most are the are the thickest well that's so we come down to this last major step which is we filter filter through all the boxes using a score threshold right we'll get to that in a second and we only keep the boxes of high accuracy so those that pass the score threshold so say our score threshold was uh, 0.8 right so if a box is boxes are uh, with high accuracy, if it is if the accuracy is higher than 0.8, we're going to keep that box. All right. So that's that's an example. Now 0.8 is just an arbitrary number. It will vary depending on what parameters you want to use for your YOLO algorithm. And then we can also combine that with an intersection over a union algorithm to eliminate the overlapping boxes. All right. So if we look up at this image, look how many there are. There are hundreds, if not a thousand plus boxes in here, and they're all overlapping everywhere. So there's a big cluster right in here. They're all overlapping. So how do you work out what, or actually, how do you work out if there's another thick box around the dog? How do you work out which one to keep? Well, if they both pass the scoring threshold, what you can use is the intersection over union to further eliminate overlapping boxes. And now let's take a look at that. So the intersection over union is a, is a further way to narrow down how you can find in your image where's your dog, where's your bicycle, and where's your car. So this is one of the last steps you can do in the YOLO algorithm. So we look here. Where's the union? So, oh, sorry, the intersection. The intersection of these two boxes is this little yellow part here. And the intersection, we're going to scribble over the yellow, is the whole area of both boxes. So let's start from fresh. We have two boxes, two really roughly drawn squares there. This is the intersection, this little yellow part here. So we're going to take that area and we're going to put that, the size of the intersection, up in this, this uh, the denominator. Oh, no, sorry, the numerator. And then we have here, and the delis this is the union. So all this area, including the, the intersection, we're going to take that area and we're going to put it there. Right? And that's how we calculate the ratio. Right, so if there's two boxes here, this purple one, this purple box here, it's still got the car in it, but it's not a good a fit as the as the one in the red. And you can't really see anything here anymore because I've colored over it, but just think of it the red as a better fit. And now this is where we bring in another threshold. So correct, the label is correct if it passes an IOU of of or greater than 
equal to or greater than 0.5. And what you can also do is up this ratio. So you could have 0.6 or you could have 0.7 or you could have 0.8. It really depends on how accurate or, or what, what threshold you've discovered when, when using your YOLO algorithm. And now as a whole, the IOU is a measure of the overlap between two bounding boxes. Okay, and now that is how we use the combination of score thresholding. So say for example, uh, this yellow box here had a, a threshold of point, point 0.8 and it was point 0.83 that it was a dog, so it would make it through. But then there's another another one here that was point 0.84 that would make it through. Then you'd use the IOU algorithm to work out which one of these we're going to keep. Same goes for the bicycle, same goes for the car, same goes for all of these. That's why we don't keep any of them because they don't pass our score threshold and they don't pass our intersection over union algorithm. So let me give you a quick demo of the YOLO algorithm running live on video. And of course, the YOLO algorithm works great on images, but it needs to work in the case of a self-driving car on video. And I mean, video is just essentially a lot of images being played really quickly. So as you can see, it's picking up different boxes around different items, but there is still some space in there, which, or some items that don't have a box around them. And so these boxes are just part of the database that doesn't have encodings for yet. So the, I, as I mentioned, the YOLO algorithm we tried out in the classes in the deep learning.ai specialization, had 80 different classes. So as, as computing gets more powerful and more powerful, it will, more classes will be available. In the case of a self-driving car, you'll need to make sure you've got all the classes covered for, for road conditions. In the case of other robots, maybe a chef robot you should, uh, or a chef computer vision thing, or a food detector, it will need to have lots of different food classes. And remember, classes, encodings, just think of them as a list of numbers and whenever uh, it tries to figure out what the item is. It compares that that list of numbers that it discovers for that person to the database of other people and figures out, okay, is this a match? Does this pass our threshold? And does this pass our intersection over union algorithm? And so there's some of the there's some of just the the quick my quick takeaways. There's a lot more in the in the classes, but remember, if you want to find out more, you can go to the where is a clean one? You can go to the deeplearning.ai course on Coursera. The link will be in the description. Thank you for your patience through that last clip, guys. I know it was a bit lengthy. And if you want to see more of that, leave it in the comment below. Do you want it in a separate video or do you want to just not see any of that and just want to see uh, what I'm doing now, like a face-to-face -face vlog thing rather than a sort of educational type stuff? I'm trying to mix these up to give you guys as much of variety as possible and really dive into to how I'm experiencing studying on my own and learning these things. So they were some of my favorite takeaways with the YOLO algorithm and the object detection and whatnot. I have two more things I want to show you or I'm not sure how many. I think it's two. Two more things I want to show you before we wrap up this video, get to some shout outs and then talk about what's going to happen in next week's video. Term two of the artificial intelligence nano degree is a go. We now have access. So next week's video will definitely be covering everything I'm working on through here. I did a bit of work on it today, but we'll save that for next week's video. The last thing I want to leave you with is this new course I found. Sorry, it was running last year, but this is the 2018 version. Deep learning for self-driving cars. And of course, the links to, to everything as always always will be in the description so check it out there but this is an introduction to the practicing of deep learning for self-driving cars I'm really excited for this it's all free I'm gonna be checking it out so I if you want it if you guys want to do it with me let me know I think it's starting relatively soon so or it already has started we can catch up on all the lectures on on YouTube anyway I was about to start checking this one out here lecture one deep learning by this guy who's an absolute legend I think he is Lex, Lex Friedman. Check out his channel, guys. He's got about 20,000 subscribers, so definitely putting out some valuable content. And if you really wanted to, you could get the, the self-driving car t-shirt. Check that out. Pretty cheap. I think the link's in there, in their YouTube description of, of the course, or it will be somewhere here. Again, I'll put this link in the description. But now it's time for some shout out. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching right through to the end of Learning Intelligence 18. This video saw the wrap up of the deeplearning.ai course, which is probably, I'm going to be honest, is one of the best courses I've ever done. Definitely in the top three. And that's, that's without a doubt. By far, it is extremely well made. The forums are great. The content is great. The teaching method is great. I really enjoyed that course. So if you're thinking about getting into deep learning, have a go, try it out, deeplearning.ai.
AI. You can find it on Coursera. Of course, the link will be in the description. But now, it is time for drum roll, please. Shoutouts of the week. <laughs> Okay, so these people either reached out to me via email, left a comment in the YouTube section, or wherever else on the internet. You can find me, you can reach out to me at any time. My email is daniel at mrdevote.com. I'm happy to answer any of your questions regarding my learning journey, AI, machine learning, health, fitness, anything I can, I'll do my best to help you out. Otherwise, if you want to help everyone else out, leave a comment below of any sort of advice you have for me, anything you have for others. And this week's question of the week is, what's one of your favorite courses that you've ever done? So mine is the deeplearning.ai course. Leave a comment below of what a course that you've done, either in the past or you're doing right now, that's, that's really, really, you think is really great and should be shared with others. Without any further ado, thank you to Madison. Thank you so much for the question on AI versus blockchain. That made me, that made me think a lot. And I think you guys can see that question in the last video. That'll be in the comment section. Antonio, thank you for your kind words. You're very, very generous. Justin, all the best with learning AI. Sebastian, good luck with the deep learning nano degree if you give it a go. Don't be afraid to jump in. When I first started, I only had three weeks of Python knowledge and I'm so glad I, I went through with it. Jeffrey, thank you so much for the words as well. I really appreciate it. Harsaf, thank you for being active in the comment section. You, you've left a comment on almost every one of my la latest videos. So thank you so much. You, you're contrib contribution is very valued. I very appreciate it. Sharan, thank you again for your words. I really appreciate all of this, guys. It's really, it really drives me forward to see this stuff in the comments. Adnan, all the best with learning AI, and I'm, I'm very honored to be able to inspire your learning journey. That's what I'm, I'm really trying to do with others. So I'm having so much fun doing what I'm doing, and I make these videos so I can at least share that with all you guys. To wrap it up, we've got one more question, actually. Leave a comment below. Why did I choose the thumbnail I did? I'll give you a clue. It relates to something in the video. Leave a comment below if you get that one as well. Next week's video is going to be covering my progression in the artificial intelligence nano degree term two so i'm really excited for that we're starting off with computer vision subscribe leave a like leave a comment if you want to see anything in the future otherwise you know what it is keep learning <laughs>